Not too much, man. Yeah, you talk about CLG. They have been underperforming a little bit. They were last seen in the TPL2 only a few days ago. Uh, they did defeat next KZ 2-1. to one. Misery was standing in for Loda in that game. One interesting thing I noticed when I went back through the picks was they gave up Enigma and Invoker two games in that series. They lost to it once. They beat it once. Uh, they were really not afraid to let Invoker slip through the draft, which a lot of teams are very reluctant to do. Uh, so interesting to see there. They also picked Sand King all three games, uh, heavily favoring that hero. Uh, in terms of their bands, they were very consistent. Lycan, Furion, and Brewmaster, all three games. So they seem to be very consistent, uh, especially nowadays, They're confident about what they want to do. Uh, so, you know, whether whether or not you want to make arguments that they're not performing up to you know, expectations, they're certainly not adjusting their drafts, at least not in the middle of a series. So I like that kind of confidence. I'm hoping they'll bring it today. Wow, man. This draft. <laughs> this seems to be a key enabler for the CLG mid-game team fight as well. But yeah, let's go to the other team real fast. Fnatic, 2-8 and eight in their last 10 matches. Now, again... 2 and 8 does not justify how well Fnatic's been improving lately. Um, in the last broadcast, I uh, casted of them Fnatic versus Quantic, Eclipsia, DD, I don't know what they're called at the moment. But that team that's been switching sponsors, yeah, even though they lost some matches, they've been showing some big, big improvement. Every time I watch Fnatic play, they seem to get a little bit better. I think, I think that's a really, really good sign for a team that's been practicing you know very hard even though the result have not been you know all there two and eight it looks like a really really bad result but i think they're a lot better than a two eight and eight team well yeah there are many different ways to lose a game uh, and some are less learning experiences and more just painful uh, and Fnatic has definitely been on the learning experience side of the curve especially recently uh, not only did they perform better in the premier league even though they lost they actually beat that same quantic team uh, that they lost to in the premier league just yesterday they played them in the joint dota masters uh, they had a convincing win and Hani, of all players, uh, Pani, you know, of course, everyone is probably familiar with his accomplishments in Dota 1, one of the best Dota 1 players, and going back a very long way, uh, has not been too successful in Dota 2, at least not in matches so far, but he went 18-0-11, man, I don't know if you had a chance to watch that game, he had a rampage near the end, Hani looks like he's back, and I'm excited to see, will he be able to deliver again, because that Queen of Pain, that was... Probably the best Queen of Pain I've seen in a very long time. And this comes against Quantic, who, you know, is certainly they've had their ups and downs recently. But, hey, they lost they lost 0-2 to them, and then he came back and performed yesterday. Well, let's jump back into this draft real fast. Uh, we did talk about the Darkseer being very important for CLG. CLG also left Invoker in the pool. They're going to pick up Darkseer, Invoker, and Brewmother for them. But you talked about that Sand King. Um, well, you we talked about how Sand King was very important for CLG. Fnatic loved to pick the Sand King as well. They picked it uh, every game against Quantic or DD or SK. Yeah, I'm not too sure how to address the other team, but Hani's been playing a very nice sanking, and he always, you know, gets a solo farm. He rushes the blink dagger. He doesn't make a pit stop here at the arcane boots, and once he gets the blink dagger, he goes off. He he gets off some very key ganks against the enemy squads. Yeah, it looks like CLG has done their homework. We do see a Queen of Pain ban. Uh, of course, she has been banned here and there very occasionally, but uh, I'm pretty sure they either heard about that match or watched it. Uh, they've done their homework. CLG is not going to let Hani get his hands on the Queen of Pain this time, so we probably will see him on the Sand King. I like this draft by Fnatic. They have a jungler if they want to run the Enigma that way. They have a good mix of stuns, uh, some decent team... Well, I say decent, some fantastic team fight. I mean, this is Wombo combo if I've ever seen it. Uh, I'm sure you've got Darkseer and Volker on the other side, but hey, I give the edge to Fnatic here in terms of the team fight department, which is really... They're at, they're, certainly has been their strength in the past, and I think they're at their most confident when they have those strong team fight heroes. So we'll see how they round out the draft, but it's still pretty open ended. All these heroes can go into whatever, pretty much any lane. Tidehunter or Sand King can solo against the Broodmother uh, pretty effectively, either with an Anchor Smash uh, or a Caustic Finale Rush. So we'll see what they do, but I like the draft. It's pretty flexible, and it's given them good team fight. As much as I love the Wombo combo potential Fnatic squad, I, I don't think it's going to get off. You need a you need a enabler. Whether it's going to be coming in the form of Puck, well, you do have Hani. You know, he's just a very <laughs> strong Puck player. Um, or you need a Darkseer. I feel like you need something to set it up. Ravage, I guess Black Hole can set it up, but I just don't expect CLG to get clumped for a five-man Black Hole. But hey, 
We've seen crazier things in Dota, and my voice is ready to scream Wombo Combo if, if it ever gets to that. Well, it's going to become your signature catchphrase at this rate. Interesting, the draft was extremely quick to start, and it's slowing down quite a bit now. Uh, Fnatic eating well into their bonus time for this fifth ban. Kind of in uh, in terms of the bans, I'm seeing if there's is there anything really interesting aside from that Queen of Pain. I don't think so. I like the I do like the Earthshaker ban. Uh, he's a very strong counter to both to Sand King and Enigma. Until they get BKBs uh, and Blink Daggers, that Fissure is just so good at canceling those channeling ultimates. So I like the ban there. Of course, it would also give a nice support uh, to CLG. It would give them three melees, so they might not have gone that route anyway. But I, I like the ban. It's trying to set up their team fight as best they can. Crystomated will be the final ban. Morphling the reply. Interesting to see that Morphling band. I mean, Morphling's kind of been one of the signature heroes for Fnatic. It's kind of their go-to carry, I might even say. But that's going to leave some other strong heroes like the Ricky in the pool. That can be a very interesting pickup, especially the Cloud, so important against the Darkseer Invoker. I mean, just good against most of the heroes coming in from CLG. I, I want to really second your your talk about the Shaker ban because, I mean, Shaker with a Blink Dagger is scary, but the Shaker with the Surge, he just kind of runs in and before he just lands a sun on him, <laughs> he drops an echo. That's 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 a pretty big game if you ask me. Venomancer is going to be the pick. We kind of talked about Venomancer for the past month or so. He hasn't been really performing too well. Even when CLG, one of the few teams that do well with Venomancer, last time they picked it against Next KZ, they actually lost that game. Um, I'm I'm not a big fan of the hero. The way that he's per currently being played, he's just fairly under level. Even though CLG generally love to give their support, you know, kind of a couple level of free farm. That just is not enough for that hero like Venomancer. We'll see if he's going to have better luck today, but I, I simply don't like the hero right now. The way that he's being played, the way the metagame is not really for him. Wow. And the Slardar definitely does not help. We're going to see a Juggernaut. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and I guess they read a Juggernaut's hero portrait. That looks pretty badass. He's definitely uh, added some muscle since the last time I've seen him played. Uh, yeah, this is an exciting pick. The Juggernaut, I, I wonder how they're going to play him. I wonder how they're going to lane him. They don't have many stuns, I will say that right now. I mean, Well, I mean, you got a lot of slows, and I, I guess I could quote-unquote compensate. What I expect of a laning is going to be a Veno Juggernaut up top. You're going to do a Jungle Darkseer, Broodmother on the bot lane here, and... Yeah, I'm going to put Invoker mid. I, if, you've got, if I even could guess the players. Um, Loda and uh, Loda and Pycat is going to swap off on, on either the uh, Invoker on the Jug, depending who they feel like they're playing. Um, the Bruma is going to be handled by Smuggling on, on the bot lane, and then we're going to have Miracle on the Jungle Dark Seer, and then we have Aki on the Venom Answer. It should work out fine, I think. The Lades will be good, and that's, I mean, if you're CLG, I don't think that's your concern. To me, the question is, what are you going to do after that first, like, let's say, 5-10 minutes? You don't really want to have a direct team fight, especially once all these heroes start hitting level 6 on Fnatic. So, Broodmother, a good hero to help deny that, can be pushing one lane at all times. Force them to spread out a little bit. I expect that will be the goal for CLG. Based on these heroes, they have good ganking uh, and they have good laning. But as far as team fight goes, that's not really their forte. Sure, they've got Invoker, and you could argue that Invoker by himself is a one-man team fight. Uh, but against so many other strong initiators, so many strong disables on the radio, I think it's going to be a lot better for CLG to keep the lane spread. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this Juggernaut in particular is played. Will they go for a quick healing ward? Use him as part of a push strategy? Will he just be farming? Uh, will they be ganky with him early on? I mean, there are a lot of different ways to play Juggernaut. Uh, generally speaking, we see him being used pretty aggressively. He's not going to be farming as much as other carries might, so it's not like a Morphling where he'll get his Lincolns, and then he'll get his Manta, and then he'll farm for two more items and hope the game goes for 40 minutes. Uh, Juggernaut generally tends to peak in the early to mid-game, uh, and he really needs that snowball. He's a very momentum-based carry. We've certainly seen those before. Uh, and with with Juggernaut in Loda's hands, he is a very aggressive player. So this could go very poorly or very well. And it's really going to come well, down to the when he chooses to be aggressive. And also it might depend on how those uh, Omni Slash decides to jump. Uh, you know, lucky <laughs> Omni Slash would jump on every hero. Unlucky ones, well, on all the creeps. You know, so we'll see. Uh, I, well, I mean, you talked about how the Juggernaut's really much an early or mid game kind of hero, and I think that really fits. Well, in terms of what we're seeing here today, Slardar is uh, somewhat of a mid-game hero. Sand King definitely is. Same thing with Windrunner. Like, none of these heroes that we're seeing today right now is very late game. And that's going to mean a very exciting mid-game for us. And that should be an exciting game to watch. Yeah, if I don't see 10 heroes constantly chasing each other around the map after the 10-minute mark, I am going to be very confused and surprised. But I guess we should go ahead and introduce the players. I'll do the uh, Dire here first. So Loda, going to be handing that Juggernaut. Uh, did start with a poor man shield. Someone pulled him some tangos just to give him a little bit of regen. 
Ake going to be on that Venomancer. He is playing a hard support. Miracle also playing a supported uh, a support Darkseer. He has picked up some wards. Pycat going to the mid lane on that Invoker. Uh, and Smogalig, um, I believe that's how it's pronounced, has also been pulled Tango, starting with a poor man shield. He's going to be handling the Broodmother. Yep. On the Radiant side, we're going to have no tell on the Enigma. I do believe that's a farming Enigma. He's probably going to go solo mid with that. Fly perhaps going in top with the support Windrunner, or excuse me, solo Windrunner. Uh, we're going to see Era playing the... Actually, when I say that, I see Orange sanking. Yeah, Hani's going to get it to solo EXP on the bot lane. So we're going to see a trialing top Era on the Slaughter, Nova playing the TIE Hunter, and Fly on the support Windrunner. This is a pretty aggressive tri lane, uh, and it, it'll be interesting to see which way does the Broodmother go, because they obviously want to get Hani matched up against her. Uh, looks like she will be heading bottom, so he's going to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, you can put the Venomancer plus the uh, Juggernaut on the bot lane, but it's going to be awkward. Though, as I say, that Loda is perhaps checking the rune. I think he's the best person to check the room with because he could always get himself out with a spin, although... Uh, just a few pot shots, but he is yeah. going to be pushed back. Rune spawns bottom, and it is a regenerator and the most anticlimactic rune to start off with. But either way, no big deal. We'll see action soon enough. Looks like Broodmother will be heading down to the bottom lane. Hani has not selected a skill yet. Very smart choice. Once he sees it's a solo Broodmother, I expect to see that level 1 caustic finale. So good for harassing Brood. Of course, she won't be making too many spider lanes until later on, but just against another melee hero, it's always a strong choice. Yeah, it definitely keeps him out of lane uh, one way or another. But back in the mid lane here, we're going to have a, a last hit war, if you will, and Volker having a lot of high base damage. And Enigma getting his high base damage from the three Eidolons. Of course, it requires a little bit of microing, but hey, uh, no tell could definitely do, do that. We've been seeing uh, the... The CLG squad making really good use of Sunstrike. And Sunstrike, because of the recent change to a pure damage type cell, it does a lot of damage. I really like the Sunstrike choice this game, because you have you have Juggernaut, a very strong level 1 kill hero, uh, along with Venomance. So this is a strong kill lane, especially if the Darkseer comes out of the jungle, which he's not going to do just yet, but as soon as he hits level 2, he could. You couple that with a Sunstrike, if you get a de even a decent Blade Fury Venomous scale, that's a free first blood. So I like the choice. It's going to give them a little bit more of an ability to be aggressive. Take a look at the bottom lane. Smoke like already down to half health, even with that poor man shield. So Hani doing a very good job for us. He has six creeps. Uh, meanwhile, Smoke like only at three and continuing to eat that caustic finale damage. Unfortunately, poor man shield does not block that uh, caustic finale damage, which at level one does 90 damage. That's pretty high damage for a nuke at the very least. That's like a lightning bolt status. Back on the top lane here. A little bit of physical harass coming in. I do believe the Iron Shell, if casted on Loda, and if he decides to go spin, that won't dispel the Iron Shell. And that's going to be absolutely important because not only are you taking Display Fury spin damage, which is a truckload, you're also taking Iron Shell, which cannot be laughed upon. And you talked about the Sun Strike to the ability to kind of make sure that you get the kill. The killing power is there. Whether the Radiant is going to be a little bit out of position to eat that key Gale in the first place, that is going to be the key question. Well, this is not the easiest lane to kill if you look at I mean, Windrunner, of course, very difficult to kill. Uh, then you've got Tidehunter, who's very tanky. Slardar, who's tanky, and will have Sprint. I mean, you could definitely kill these heroes, but they are not the easiest ones to bring down. Uh, and whenever you're trying to gank into a tri lane, especially one with this many disables, you got to be real careful, man, because if you get slightly out of position, you're suddenly the gank will turn and you'll be the ones who are dying. Uh, looks like Nova is already rotating towards the middle lane, so they're just going to go two on two here. Yep, that's going to free up a little bit. Ooh, he's going to find himself in invisibility rune. Might actually set up a gank. There's a level one gush as well as an anchor smash. If we see no, no, no tells out of mana at this point here. So maybe going to try with six eidolons, although I really doubt it. Of course, they, I do believe uh, Invoker saw the invis rune being picked up. So this this could be actually you're right. Uh, you know, Dire Squad could make a try right now, being a time there's not there. Well, they should have spotted him picking up that rune. If they were watching the minimap, they definitely would have. Either way, they know he's missing. Uh, and chances are, if he's not sitting in the tri lane, he's probably rotating towards mid. As I say that, he heads off towards Miracle, but he's not going to solo kill him. Uh, there's no invoker on his side of the map. Uh, Hani continuing to harass Smogoli. He's definitely getting the better of this lane. 21 creeps already. A lot of those are spider lanes. Uh, but just if you look at the HP, uh, the, the sort of the damage being done, the Smogoli is out of consumables. He's eaten through all those tangos. Hani with the quick reign of health, uh, so going for some early lane sustainability. He's having a great time, and this is big. If Sand King wins, wins the lane, I mean, Broodmother is supposed to do well in her lane, 1v1. Even if it's a Sand King, she should do all right. And if Hani gets a quick Blink Dagger, or just, you know, quick pair of boots and starts roaming at level 6, that could be real trouble. Yeah, I mean, the, the, 
the benefit of having caustic finale is like you actually don't even need to get the last hit. You could just hit the, hit the creeps a couple of times, and if, even if you miss the last hit, the creep will still explode, and that's really keeping uh, uh, smuggling out of the lane. I do like the ring of health choice. It's probably not going to get upgraded to a full vanguard, although he will have the choice to do so. It's basically going to allow him to stay in lane and just really out harass a broodmother, which should be his game. Like broodmother generally out harass every other hero, but Hani's just kind of working at him right now. Uh oh, Aki might be in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, is he gonna be okay? He does get shackle shot? That's only a level one shackle shot. He'll be just fine. Almost got caught there though. That could have been pretty bad for him. Hani did pick up two sentry wards. He's already placed them both. Uh, Burrow striking in aggressively under the tower. Is he gonna go for a kill? No, just doing a little harassment. I feel like he should have held on to that, but not the biggest deal. I'm sure he'll be ferrying out some regen momentarily. Mirko hits level 5, no vacuum just yet, but level 2 surge, I think he's going to make a go, he does have that smoke still, but I don't think, you know, he's going to bypass most of the wards, and here comes that gank, we need a gale and we need a surge, and those have to hit on the right targets. Well, this is probably the worst possible time to gank, because the lane is pushed deep into enemy territory, of course he can hang around, wait for it to push back out, and then make a go, uh, as of course, first blood happening on the middle lane, Pycat solo killing No-Tail under his tower. Not too often you see uh, Enigma dying in his lane, especially uh, to an Invoker tower diving. Really big kill coming out for Pycat. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that as we might see a little bit of engagement happening on the top lane here. Loda gets himself an Iron Show. Maybe they're not going to get a hero kill, but they're definitely going to maybe push the lane a little bit. What happened in the mid lane here was the two heroes probably traded hits, and uh, Enigma definitely not respecting the burst damage come from Pycat. Uh, no tell Dahi is going to have the better end of the engagement because he had three Eidolons. There's even more trade happening on the mid lane here, but Pycatch should be fine. But No tell just stuck his ground, dropped off a Sunstrike and close nap as well. As we see Spin going out on the top lane here, Gale does hit a Nova and Splin plus Iron Shell. You can see the damage output is just simply immense. And the kill goes to the Venomancer, so Aaron in a little bit of trouble as well. Surge goes on against Loda, Aaron in huge trouble, but you see Loda taking some tower pot shot as well. He does, ooh, nice shackle shot, and Fly might get a return kill. No, he pops the magic stick and will be fine. Mirko is going to go south. Sunstrike, Sunstrike, I hear the sound. That's oh, good. nice Miss. dodge by Era. Era did dodge back at the last second there. That was pretty big. Huge dive for Miracle. He's coming back in. He wants blood. He's going to get Slither and Crush. I think he's going to pay for this one. Indeed he is. Really overextending there, but they got the they got a kill to start that one off, so not too bad of a trade. Of course, he is pretty highly leveled, which means it's a big deal to give up these kills to a tri lane. They're really hurting for levels. They haven't been doing any sort of pulling, and now you're giving up. I believe he's level six. That's a lot of. Oh no, he's still level five. But that's a I lot mean, of exp. It's still pretty high, given that we're only six minutes. It's definitely solo, sort of, in terms of exp. Of course, he did definitely do that uh, ancient stacking kind of, or excuse me, the, the big camp stacking. Looks like we have a teleportation scroll coming in. Trying to set up a kill against Hani. I don't think this is going to work out, but as I say that, he has no Sandstorm. He has no mana for the Burrow Strike, and all they got to do is run against it. The Sun Strike's going to miss, but Hani will go down regardless. Easy kill. Yeah, not not too often you see uh, you know a teleport gank onto a Sand King with no detection work out that well, but he doesn't have any points in uh, Sandstorm. Of course, normally that wouldn't matter because Darkseer can vacuum you out of it, but Darkseer doesn't have vacuum. I mean, now he does. <laughs> But yeah, if he had just he taken that one point, it could have worked out for him. Unfortunately, he did not, and he will pay. So a kind of a greedy build by Hani does end up coming to bite him. That being said, he's still sitting at 47 CS. I'm just going to take a quick look at the other scores. Uh, while we have a second here, 30 on No-Tail, 23 on Era. Meanwhile, for the Dire, Pycat at 25, Loda at 22, Smogulig at 20, uh, 42, and 32 on Miracle. So overall, it looks like the Dire is getting more farm, uh, thanks to that Darkseer. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, Dire... He's getting a lot of farm in, in jungle as well. I mean, generally I say, you know, it's just neutral creeps, not too much, but a lot of those oh, neutral Hani's creeps... Oh, going to be dead creeps. here in the bottom lane. He used his Burrow Strike. He finally picks up Sandstorm, but it's not going to matter. Struke's into the trees. He goes down. Meanwhile, a kill happening on the top lane as Slardar gets picked off by Juggernaut. Things are not looking good for Fnatic. They picked a lineup that really wants to get to the mid game without sustaining too much damage, but unfortunately they're taking a lot of it. Kind of a misplay by Hani there. Should not have TP'd into the tower. Especially when he didn't have that point in, uh, in Sandstorm. Really needed some backup. But unfortunately, nobody can leave this top lane right now as it is being pressured quite heavily. And speaking of the top lane, uh, I mean, tower, they are protecting it, but no one's protecting the bot tower. As thanks to the two kills against Con Hani, he has stopped a lot of his momentum. And uh, smuggling is right back in this lane. Soul Ring is going and is getting a lot of spiraling. He's not going to use him to farm or push in the lane. But what he's really going to do is send him into jungle. And that's going to accelerate his farm. So I think smuggling is going to be going for a BKB right from get go. Against the Sand King, 
and a uh, and a tie hunter, I think you gotta go BKB, right? Or maybe Orkin, you could silence them instead. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I think I don't know if the item selection matters. What, to me, what's I guess what's more important is that they just continue to pressure Hani. They don't want to let him get that blink dagger. They don't want to let him sit in the lane. And in fact, that's what they're doing. They're keeping two heroes down here. I mean, in terms of, I guess the silence would be nice. The, both items would work, frankly. And it, it really depends what kind of a game they want to play. Do they want to be more aggressive? Do they want to have the broodmother city in this lane, or or do they want her to maybe take a more active role, perhaps rotating to another lane and pushing there? Yeah, aggressive is the, is the name of the game, I suppose. We're keeping bot lane locked down. On top lane here, I think Loda should, could be left on his own device for a bit. He does have the face boot finish. So, I mean, of course, he could spin the stun from Era as well. I think he's going to be completely fine in this lane. Um, of course, Venomancer will be coming back to uh, maybe perhaps setting up a couple kills. On the mid lane, this lane should have been a wash, but because of the solo kill being done by PyCat, he's, uh, he's ahead as well. I feel like CLG is winning all three lanes right now. Oh, they definitely are. And speaking of Pygat, he's going for a four staff rush. He's almost got it too. Only five hundred gold away. Finally, the support arrives for Hani. Some much, some much needed support. Uh, unfortunately, there is no detection up on Fly. He doesn't have the gold for it just yet. Oh, uh, action on the top lane. Loda gets to get. Lo Gale goes in on error. He's getting blade furied right now. I think he's going to go down, but he's fighting under the tower. Omni slash coming out. Gets one kill. Will he get away? No. Nova's going to pick him off. Uh, and in the middle lane, Pycat almost going down, escaping with forty-seven HP. Oh, uh, that baited out. The black hole from no tell. Not enough DPS output. Perhaps if he got an extra level, uh, if he didn't die earlier, it would have turned the entire fight around there. So a little bit of unlucky play here from Fnatic, but overall, four kill lead from the Dire Squad, and they're leading by quite a bit of gold. 3,000 to be exact. Maybe this up a kill against Miracle. Nice stun coming in. Let's see how good the chain stun is. The power shot does hit no Malefice. That's a little bit odd. Uh, yeah, not, maybe a little bit of miscommunication coming out there, not sure it happened, not sure if you caught it, but Invoker actually picked up a kill on Tidehunter towards the top lane with another Sunstrike, so PyCat is really making this Exhort build pay off. Sometimes you'll see Invokers go for the Exhort build, and if they don't get early kills, they feel pretty useless in the mid game. Uh, and let, you know, they can get the double forward spirits, does push pretty hard, and the right click is decent, but if you're not getting those early kills, then normally the crowd control of Wex is going to serve you better in the mid game, but he's making fantastic use. Uh, of that Sunstrike, so I think it's definitely working out for him. Yeah, Pycat's definitely not hitting every Sunstrike, but the fact that he's trying, you, you never know when, when it's going to hit, and if it does, for example, on the top lane, Ty definitely paid a prize there. Smuggling, again, back in control on the bot lane, we have now gotten a glimpse of what his item choice would be, and it's going to be a uh, Orchid, so he's going to be going for a little bit more offensive. You see Burrow Strike, Epicenter, that's going to be casted, but Smuggling simply too fast, and he's going to dodge out of that, so the Sans King uh, really... Not getting too much in return. Generally, he likes to rush for the blink, but now has stopped for a arcane boots instead of Gale. Let's go and fly. Here comes a spin from the Juggernaut, but the sun comes in against Aki as well. Aki will be going down the vacuum. Will that save him? No, it will not. No surge. Miracle instead went. Oh, die. Nice Ravisher. It does hit on Juggernaut, but they want Aki, Aki or excuse me, Miracle. Miracle's going to go back out. Loda very quick with the face, but not going to chase back against Nova. Good choice. No tail ports in at the right time. I think they could have even saved the, the Venomancer, but, you know, it was fine. Wow, Nova somehow hitting level 7 despite being in that tri lane. I'm actually impressed that he's found any any experience along these lines. Unfortunately, he doesn't have boots yet. If he had boots, he would have been in range to hit Darkseer, and that would have been at least one kill. Uh, instead, Miracle able to surge away. Uh, so those high levels on Darkseer paying off that level 2 surge, uh, as well as just being a little bit tankier. Keep him alive. Hani is just having all kinds of fun here in the bottom lane. Smogul like, trying to backstab his creeps. Hani doing his best to prevent it. Hani did go for arcade boots, so not going to be rushing Blink Tag in this game. He's just under too much pressure. If Broodmother gets a good start, you can't rush a Blink because you're just not going to sit in lane against her. Needs to be spamming that Burrow Strike just to clear out the creep wave. Uh, Broodmother, yep. meanwhile, aggressively farming the enemy jungle. Uh, you talked about how Tidehunter was able to pick up the early, early set, level 7. I think that's kind of like the silver lining of a bad situation. Like, did their arrows keep dying on the top lane? So Tide Hunter is the designated farmer whenever arrows teleporting back in lane or waiting to respawn. So he, <laughs> that's why he's getting levels. But I'm not I'm not sure if that was the game plan, to have arrow die a lot so you hit the quick level 7. No, I don't think the game plan was for Slaughter to have power treads and nothing else. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, and only be level 7 and 13 minutes into the game. That's not a good sign. I mean, the levels are okay. They're not horrible. I think the more important thing, though, is that No-Tail has been shut down. I don't know if you remember the last time we cast him, but he was a solo mid Enigma in that, and in one of the other games we cast as well. And he had a, I think he had like a 20-minute pipe mechanism. Something along those lines. Really, really good farm. And it didn't end up paying off, but I mean, 
this time around, he's being shut down early, which, you know, it's going to be that much harder for him to contribute in the mid game. Uh, he's got a cloak, looks like he'll be going towards the pipe, but not even near the hood yet, so not having a good time at all. And we're also going to see a glimpse of Lotus item choice. It is going to be a Drums of Endurance. It's going to give them that movement speed burst. So right now, the entire Dire Squad, after that Drums pop, they're going to be all chasing like crazy. Tier 1 tower on the top is going to be destroyed. So right from the get-go, 13 minutes in, Fnatic down by 5 kills, down by 2 towers, and a lot of levels and items as well. It's, it's not looking too good for Fnatic. We talked about how they're improving right now, but not at the level against CLG. Well, CLG is certainly making a case for why they're still one of the top teams in the Dota scene. Even though, you know, they may have dropped a few matches here there in the Star Series, the push is continuing on the top lane, and the Healing Ward is picked up. Level 3 Healing Ward, he hasn't taken any points in the stats. I love this build. Uh, if you need the mana, then you can always get, you know, some clarities ferried out to yourself. The Healing Ward is so good for pushing. Uh, we still to see the tower taking a decent amount of damage. Yeah, that build works perfectly if you not if you know you're going to go for drums. Uh, generally, you need a stat to kind of support your Blade Fairy and your HP level and whatnot. But if you're getting a Bracer, that, you know, that's your stats right there. And, uh, of course, the Robo Magic gives you that intelligence. We can spam that healing war if necessary. He's, of course, sp skipping crits for now. Crits, not too useful when your base damage is... No, not too high. I'm, pre I'm sure Sing Sing would disagree, but <laughs> that's, that's Sing Sing. Um, well, and also the other thing to point out here is the level 1 crit is actually pretty decent. Uh, it's The skill certainly scales well, but level 1 crit, 15%, and it's the same amount of total damage if it hits. So you don't have to level it up early. Uh, you certainly can, but you don't need to, and he's still being pretty effective. Hani has picked up a Vanguard in the bottom lane. Broodmother, I think, is having an Orchid ferried out here. No, just two Oblivion stats picked up. Hani in a lot of trouble here. I'm not, not sure why he's taking so long to Sandstorm. He said he's going to Burrow Strike away. Smogly going to continue the chase. Will we see a Sun Strike? Uh, I'm not sure if Pycat has invoked. He does not. Smogly like, continuing to chase. Will there be any sort of backup here for Hani? He should be able to Burrow Strike out. Burrow Strike is into the trees and tries to TP. Not sure if that was the correct decision. Oh, man, that was close. Yeah, he did dodge a uh, spawn spiraling with his sandstorm. So some big play from Hani to keep himself alive, but keeping yourself alive is not the same thing as winning the lane, and that's definitely not what he's doing right now. Uh, Smuggling, having whatever he wants on the bot lane. I'm very surprised that we didn't even see a sun strike attempt on the bot lane. So perhaps the invoke was on cooldown, because um, uh, a sandstorm, or excuse me, the sand king was exposed for a long duration of time. I In don't any case, think it was. I think he just wanted to hold on to the. You know, he didn't want to invoke Sunstrike and then have a team fight break out. I see. That would be my guess. Well, you know, Sanking's now back in lane, and Smuggling will be going back to the harassment path again. Uh, I want to mention here, PyCat has taken five levels of Exhort and only three levels of Quas. I'm I think sure that's a misclick. a misclick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, normally you want to get the double Forge Spirits online as quickly as possible. So expect to see him get one more point Quas and then go back uh, and at least get one point of Wex. Uh, as it does open up a lot of useful abilities. That Deafening Blast, uh, the Meteor, all pretty good. Of course, Alacrity never, uh, can never really be underestimated, especially if you're going for an Exhort build. Now we see uh, Darkseer being confident enough to farm in the enemy jungle again, or maybe he's going to try to set up a kill against the Sanking. They don't have detection again, but you talked about how Vacuum is you know, there. They can actually go for it as well. Maybe they can go for No-Tail. No-Tail does sense something is up, so should be fine. To be honest, this is a very passive game, considering the heroes that are in play here. I expected to see a lot more aggression. I mean, we've seen some kills here and there, uh, but for the most part, it feels like everyone is farming. Loda is going ma a man fight here, breaking out between Era and Loda, but Loda is going to run away, tail tucked between his legs. Even though Juggernaut has been uh, taking some steroids since the last patch, apparently not quite strong enough yet. He's got some muscle, but Slaughter is still a little bit... A little bit more He's muscular. a scary fish, man, that's for sure. Yeah, especially when how that's a trident, man. Trident versus sword, I, I think I'm going to put my money on the trident. <laughs> uh, Smogo, he just continued to pressure this bottom lane. Oh, he sees No-Tail. He's going in. He pops the ultimate. No, he actually doesn't have the Orchid yet. I'm not sure this is a good idea. He might pay for it. Do they have detection is the question. I don't believe they do. Oh, Dust actually is up! Ravage comes out! Smokely gonna go down! Definitely worth it, in my opinion. Even though you blow the Ravage, it's not like there's any other team fights happening. And hey, you shut down Smokely. I don't know if he got to buy his Orchid. Oh, he did, right before he died. As they say that, Aki looking in position to drop off a Gale on the top lane. The Gale does hit, the spin's gonna be right there. Era blows a stun, and I think Era's gonna be dead for sure. He knows that as well. He's gonna stay his ground, try to do as much damage as possible. And the big crit coming in, that level 1 crit. 200 damage. Well, you know. 
That's why crits are four. When it hits, it hurts. Oh man, but another one hero ultimate coming here. Pike hack and a drop to the black hole middle lane. Man, Fnatic is getting things done. Sure, they're, they're blowing teamfight ultimates, so you might think it's not the best trade. A Juggernaut Omni Slash coming in, and looks like everyone should escape. Yeah, but that's the surge against no. No-Tail. No-Tail trying to pour out the crits. One crit, second crit. <laughs> no, one crit was all he needed. And slow that putting out a little bit of grubby. Huge plays here, but as you see Nova, a little bit of trouble in the mid lane. Spin coming in. He's phasing through. Loda gets himself yet another kill. Miracle's probably going to die. Burrow Strike, that's going to hit on Miracle. Miracle does go down here. Heroes, make sure they do get the kill. But Loda is just getting big at this moment. Level 12. We saw that uh, Omni Slash. I mean, even though it bounced on the creeps a couple times, was it was able to do some big damage. And if he hits level 16 before any oh, other hero does... That's gonna be ugly. Fly was flirting with death, narrowly dodging that sun strike. Pycat went for it again, and you know, hey, it's no different from playing Pudge. If you throw out enough hooks at some point, one will probably latch. Uh, and Pycat doing the same thing here with the sun strikes. Not to say that it doesn't take a lot of skill to land them, but uh, the more you throw out, the more chance you have to hit. So Pycat certainly adopting that creed this game around. Yeah, right now uh, Radiant again down by towers. Uh, let's see how many towers they're exactly down by. Down by. Two towers. They got a tier one bot, uh, but that's it. That's all they got. The gold difference is reflecting that as well. Five thousand gold lead. With that gold lead, we're seeing a little bit of item transition. We see a uh, four staff completed on Pycat as well as seventeen hundred gold. Don't be surprised if it's a blink dagger, as that's one of the key item on Exor Invoker. Blink around to position yourself for a key spells. What is going to be a meteor? What's going to be an ice wall? I think it's going to be ice wall for now because he doesn't even have points into Wex, but. You know, all you need is one point of wex to drop that huge DPS meteor. Oh man, Nova really going out into no man's land to place this forward. Definitely seen him die before, uh, kind of, you know, over aggressively trying to ward by himself. Uh, it looks like he'll be okay this time around as they were not going to go on him. Smogalig just doing some jungling with Hani, who has picked up his Blink Dagger in the meantime. This could be big. Level 13? Or no, I Hani. Can't... Hani's picked up his Blink. Okay. Invoker does have a Blink as well, so. Looks like the, the Blink Daggers are now online. Uh, the Radiant ready for Team Fight again because they do have Ravage up and uh, Enigma Ultimate in a minute. But a minute is probably not enough time. And you see the Roshan coming up right now. I was actually just about to say one of the benefits of going for Exhort Invoker is you can Roshan a lot earlier. The Forge Spirits do a ton of damage. Uh, the Healing Ward going to be very helpful as well. A very thoughtful lineup uh, in terms of the skill selection. Uh, the Roshan timing, I like how they're taking advantage of their map control. And you see Broodmother doing the best thing she can to help this Roshan type, which is pushing in the bottom lane. Going to draw a lot of attention back sooner or later. If they don't, uh, they're going to end up losing a tower. That's going to be the price they pay. Roshan is dropped. It's time for Fnatic to run. Looks like they will. Vacuum onto some illusions. Not going to amount to anything. And Smogalik continuing to pressure this bottom lane. Yep. Uh, and if they leave smuggling alone, that tower is going to get destroyed. You see a fly is coming back in. Sanki should be in position as well. Now we have the teamfight capability that Fnatic wants. Uh, they survived the early game. They're pretty down. But they definitely have the spells to turn this game entirely around. The thing is, will CLG fall into that trap? CLG spreading out well. Like, even if you get a double kill in the mid lane and perhaps push down your tier 1 tower, Broodmother is going to continue pushing on the ball lane. And speaking of Broodmother, might be a little bit trouble. We do have that dust. Shaco shot is going to latch against the trees. Ultimate from Hani. Yes, he is channeling right now. Smuggling will go down. Is he going to get a kill against Fly though? Those Spiderlings coming in. <laughs> would that be enough? It's going to be Oh, it's up. so close. He gets creep blocked by his own creeps as he can. Oh, man. Sunstrike? Sunstrike? Yeah, this would be, certainly be a time. Oh, nice yeah. dodging by Fly. Completely prepared for that. Era getting cold snapped in the middle lane. No-Tail's got the ultimate, but he doesn't have any backup. Gets definitely blasted. He's not going to be dropping that black hole for now. Just going to be running away. Tail tuck between his legs. There's no... Oh, black hole on three. Huge black hole. Where's the Ravage? Nova trying to get in range. He pops the Ravage. Nobody dead yet. Two go down. Uh, but the Aegis is uh, coming up on the Juggernaut. He'll be right back. Or is that the Juggernaut? No, that's Pike. He's going to check it out. He has the Omni Smash. But the creeps again in the lowest way. But the spin will be able to do a spin plus cold snap. Pretty cheesy combo, if you ask me. And with that in uh, Aegis on the Invoker triple kill being picked up, it was some good ultimate usage from the Radiant. And we talked about that's one way to come back. But the Aegis was simply too much. You know, and, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the worst fight in the world for Fnatic. They did burn right. the Aegis. Uh, they, got a, they got one kill. They also got the kill on bottom. Uh, that being said, you don't want to be feeding Pycat. <laughs> it's generally not a good way to win matches. Uh, so. Pycat, he just picked up his Blink Dagger before the Roshan. Two minutes later, he's up to another 1800 gold. He's going to pick up a Point Booster right now. You no, know, Arcane Booster. Psych. Interesting. <laughs> Big jukes by Pycat. Fooling even the, 
even luminous once even more. luminous uh trust me like i fool myself you don't need anyone one, else one thing i did want to mention though uh we talked about the team fight but the ultimates aren't the only component to that uh, another component is going to be team fight items particularly mechanism and pipe in terms of that mechanism fly is getting pretty close to it in terms of the pipe enigma has the hood and the headdress so to me this is the real key they want to get level 11 on all of their big team fight heroes which they have on everyone except for tide and they want to get that pipe and mechanism up Little action breaking on the bottom lane. Nope, just era. Uh, looks like auto tagging some creeps. I thought I heard a crush there. Nova has sentry wards and uh, smuggling, revealing himself, feeling fairly safe despite against era. There's a vacuum backwards. Era's running. He is silenced, so no crush being oh, dropped. Oh, Malphus on the creep nope. by accident. Oh, uh, well, he. Well. <laughs> Brumada right now is 1v4 because he knows he has backup. You gotta keep in mind the Invoker very mobile at this point. Dust is gonna be wearing off. Despite having four heroes in, none of it had that big fight, team fight ultimate. And Smuggling knew that. He is gonna be working on BKB next. Already had the Mithra Hammer back on the top lane here. Media Ooh gets oh. dropped against Bonnie, but quick blink out. So it looks like we had action all over the map right now, but the action might not be done yet. Hani dodges the Gale. He's very running low in terms of the mana. I do believe Pycat will kill oh, him, especially with the range of the blink. No, he keeps dodging suns, but he could only survive for so long. His teleport scroll is not up. He got to survive for at least t 12 more seconds for that arcane boots. Wow. Well, he's so wasted enough good. time that it's almost paying for itself, even if he ends up dying. <laughs> oh, that sun strike in the head just missing. Pycat gets the vision he needs. He, he blinks in, and Hani's just going to. Cry, to, cry himself to sleep as he slowly dies here in the corner. How did that have sight? Oh, uh, we have a gem well, on... Well, from Sunstrike. He's Sunstrike. No, no, no. How do you have ciphers against Sandstorm? Because gem oh. true sight was right there. Ah. So Venomaster not only will be, you know, killing invisible heroes, he will be dewarding quite a bit as well. Yeah, one of the one of the ways to secure an advantage... Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Eric getting jumped on the bottom lane. Is he going to even get a crush off? Nope, he's not. These, these spread out engagements are definitely favoring CLG. This is how they want to fight. This is not what Fnatic wants to do, but when a Broodmother gets a good start, it's kind of hard to stop her. You can't just have one hero go down there anymore. She can kill that hero quite easily. And so once you devote two or three, then suddenly they can jump your other heroes. Now, Loda going to get a tower kill top. He's got 3,500 gold in the bank. Shackle shot going to hit. Not going to do anything. Fly might be dead here if he doesn't run. That Omni Slash is coming. It is going to hit. Fly in a lot of trouble. You can't wind run those slashes from the ult. But he is going to get away anyway, because it just wasn't yeah. quite enough. Will there be a he, Sunstrike? He, he dodged some of the wind runs in between the strike. Venomaster gets a kill. I thought that was a Sunstrike kill. I was, I was keeping my uh, my cursor on the on the fountain right now. But yeah, the push commence on the bot lane. Yeah, for anyone uh, out there that's wondering about the mechanic of Omni Light Slash, is uh, Omni Light does, you know, slashes. Uh, and if your attack speed is... Juggernaut, sorry. If your attack speed is quick enough, you will do extra slashes in between. Windrunner will dodge the extra slash in between. Right. Hani might be chasing in. Of course, it's blink dagger getting canceled by the wards. And right now, CLG is very slow, methodically pushing in. They're getting tier 2 towers. The mid is only the tier 2 tower left. And they're doing it despite the enemy team having these big team fight ultimates. And you talked about how smart CLG is playing it. They're spreading out so that, yeah, they can use their team fight ultimates. Um, but it's, it's going to be, you're, you're getting one or two at the most. And sure, you're going to get the kills, but it's very expensive kill. And the fact that you're not going to be capable of fighting a team fight for the next, you know, minute or so, two minutes or so. And another component of this, of this strategy, it's not just, you know, how they're playing it. It's also what they're building. For example, Lotus picked up drums. That's a fantastic pushing item. Uh, of course, you know, it's not like the strongest push item in the game, but it gives you a nice little bit of extra pushing power. Your creeps do benefit from that attack speed. More importantly, he's gone for a Manta style. So he can pressure top, uh, and meanwhile you will have Smoke Lake on the Broodmother constantly pressuring bottom. The other three heroes can rotate in between, pressuring mid here and there. Uh, they're keeping complete map control. I just took a look, look at the Fog of War, and it is not pretty for the Radiant. They have no vision, no map control. The early gem, and I was trying to mention this earlier, before that gank broke out the bottom lane, so good for securing map control. Once you have those early towers down, if you start dewarding, there's nothing they can do, especially on heroes like this. Uh, a Broodmother with Silence can easily kill off anyone on your team. Uh, you know, And then if you add any other hero, add an Invoker with some Cold Snaps, Sun Strikes, that kind of thing, suddenly you're dead. So you can't leave the base, you can't travel alone. And if you travel as a group, then they just push the other lane. Right. And Again, of course, the gold, play the gold graph from, uh, is reflecting this. Um, I, they did kill the Venomancer who had the gem. Instead of holding on to the gem, they, they destroyed it instead. Um, and that's allowing Tie Hunter to put up some, some key strategic award right now. They're putting some very defensive ward, which is what they need. Uh, so we see 
um, Notel finds the Invoker, it's going to usher him out of the Ancient Camp. They're getting some map control back, and that's what they need. I think this is time for the Radiant to roam as 5 and try to get some tier, tier 1 tower, tier 2 towers, because they cannot play this way that they've been playing for a long game. Because right now, Loda, Smuggling, Invoker, they're getting too far, and too quickly as well. Yeah, I completely agree. If you look at the item progression on the Radiant, they've gotten those basic items up, but there's really nothing beyond that. Mechanism of Windrunner, but no Force Staff, no Ultimate Orb. Uh, she's not even close to building anything else. No Tail, he's got the pipe, that's it. Nova, nothing. Era is getting close to BKB. Uh, that might be the one thing they're waiting for. Uh, and once once you have that BKB on Slaughter, I mean, you're not going to win a farm war because you're just too far behind. Even though you arguably have a little bit better late game, or it's pretty, I guess it's pretty even. Uh, you know the team fight on Fnatic, but there's some good there's some good DPS and some good team fight on CLG. You're too far behind in items. You need to make something happen uh, once you have the core items up. So I guess wait for the BKB on Slaughter, but then you need to go. You can't just sit here and watch every lane be farmed as well as your jungle. I mean the gold graph is only going in one direction right now, and that's CLG's way. Yep. You talked about how the pushing item is being bought on CLG. Loda adds to it with the Vlads. Generally not the best item you want to pick up on Juggernaut, but in this case, it's gonna. It's, strategically, it makes a lot of sense. It looks like we have uh, Sanking try to prey upon on the mid lane, but really can't do too much. I mean, even if he gets a perfect combo in, Loda can in theory spin and dodges the Burrow Strike and the Pulse Novas. So really, he's he's fine. Man, this I, point, I just want to say, if I was on Fnatic right now, it just feels so helpless. You know, like, CLG is playing this flawlessly. There's nobody ever caught out of position. They don't even have too many aggressive wards up to protect them from ganks. Uh, but, you know, Fnatic just doesn't have any openings. If they go after... Who are they going to kill? They try to kill Darkseer. He's got a pipe and mechanism. Good luck killing him. You try to kill Loda. He's got a Mansa style. He's got that ultimate. He's got Blade Fury. Lots of ways for him to survive. Broodmother with the BKB. Of course, running at the speed of light. Speaking of that Broodmother, he gets stunned once. Gushed again. Malphus to follow, but he's going to BKB. Will they blow a black hole just for him? I don't think so. And he's going to walk away. So even a well-executed gank, not going to amount to anything. Speaking of well-executed ganks, Fly might be in some trouble here. Loda dropping the ultimate. Mechanism is used. Big vacuum wall to follow. Black hole on one. Or actually, that was on two. Loda and Miracle in some trouble here. Nice Meteor coming out. Couple of kills going the Dyer's way. Three to be exact. Uh, and that's going to mean Rex. Yeah, BKB up on Pycat to dodge out Ravage. Well, Aaron, a little bit of trouble. He's trying to stun, but he can't really get off the stun. Here comes a huge ultimate on Hani. That's going to get a kill, but that's just a kill as Loda is now going to kill the mid creeps. And it could go on the tower as well. Pycat can even buy back if he really wants to do so. Does he have the gold? No, he doesn't. Uh, Purchased most of it with the BKB. Of course, Brumont is going to be joined on the mid lane. Melee Rax is going to go down, like you said. And CLG is just really cementing all the advantage. They could even swing on bot if they really want to do so. Everyone's dead for a couple more seconds. Even if they're alive, no big uh, black holes or ravage uh, to be dropped. Let's see how confident they feel like. They, it looks like they are feeling confident, and they're going to just chill on the bot lane. Well, they know the ravage is down. They know the black hole is down. And Fnatic knows it too. They're going to GG out. Not an early GG at all, I completely agree with this. I mean, the gold graph is not, you're not telling the whole story, but when you're down 25k gold, it's normally not a good sign. And In this game, I think it's quite accurate. Close to doubling the go is CLG. Again, it's not like they kind of blown out Fnatic, you know, up by 40 kills or something like that, but it's just smart kills, you know. Smart tower push here, back off there, you know, get a gem to D-Ward, it's, it's just really, really slow and methodical. This is a very smart play that we're watching from CLG right now. You know, the only thing I can point to, which I feel like maybe Fnatic should have done differently, or maybe this was one of the flaws in their draft, that tri lane top didn't accomplish anything. In fact, they lost, you know, and it was a, it was a three on two or even a three on one at some points. If you're gonna tri lane, you gotta get kills or at least shut down your lane. They didn't either. Uh, and, you know, this is one of the downsides to tri lanes, why they're not too common nowadays. Is it puts a lot of pressure on the other lanes, and that pressure was, you know, a Broodmother and an Invoker getting a good start, a Darkseer, perhaps even more importantly, getting absolute free farm in the jungle. They didn't even try to gank him once, of course he's very hard to kill. Uh, but to me, that's the only thing I could point to that I really, maybe Fnatic should have done differently in retrospect. Yeah, I'm going to echo your point on the tri as well. Most tri if you actually look at it, this has the ability or the potential to do two things. Either you kill, uh, which is kind of the more common thing to see, or the other is like if the killing thing doesn't work out, then you go into a push strat. If you look at Slaughter or Tai Hunter and Windrunner, that is not a pushing tri lane. Against a Juggernaut that could Blade Fairy your stun, you're not going to get any kills. And that's why uh, it didn't work out like LG suggested. This is game number one. We're going to head into game number two right now. This is the best of three series. Hope you guys enjoying the broadcast so far. We're going to be coming back.